off uh, <laughs> a podcast where we take two movies we find to be similar in some way and we compare contrast and rate them i am your may queen gabe siegel because I, I am born in may so that works oh, and, and you uh, are queen. this is my uh disrespectful uh uh boyfriend boyfriend yeah just say it just everything bad just about a boyfriend that you're christian in this scenario just but what's up it. nick hey man how you doing i'm good i'm great I'm healthy. Yeah, healthy, healthy men. We are healthy, healthy. men. We are men's. We are men's health. Mm-hmm. Cool uh, man. Sponsored uh, by Men's Health. Yeah, uh, sponsored by Men's Health. <laughs> uh, go to menshealthcom slash facing off pod. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna get sued. Our uh, tea is I high. Can we have it. high tea. What's up, man? How you been? Uh, I've been pretty good. How have you been? Uh, doing well. The, you know, these movies are kind of a fucking bummer. Uh, but uh, yeah. Oh, last week I'm not going to tell you this story again because I already did. But I got scammed at work pretty hard. It was very elaborate. Scams, work scams are very elaborate. So everyone should be careful of that. It involved an Do email. Do not buy uh, gift, gift cards. cards and yeah. then send picture send pictures of the gift card. To other people. Yeah, luckily that didn't, I didn't end up getting to that step, but I almost lost like $600 in a matter of like an hour. Don't Um, do that. So if you get any weird emails that aren't the right domain name, no matter who they say, some, you know, the chairman of your company, just ignore it or send it to your manager or IT department and don't get scammed, y'all. Hey, yo, Nick. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Yeah, definitely wash and wash your hands. Uh, you know, to the beat of your favorite song or something. I don't know, but wash your fucking hands out there, bruh. Bruh? Yeah. Uh, Nick, uh, what we're are gonna, our two movies? Yeah, our two movies are going to be uh, Midsommar. Is it Midsommar or Midsummer? We should probably establish that right now. I'm going to say Midsommar. I'm going to say Midsummer for All the right. rest of this. Well, <laughs> you ain't Swedish, dude. Uh, I'm not Swedish either, as, <laughs> as you can tell with my red hair. We are doing Midsommar versus... The 1976 version of The Wicker Man, the OG one. Uh, And we're going to spoil these two movies. So if you haven't seen them, uh, please stop now. Uh, If you, if Midsommar seems like the type of movie you wouldn't like, and I honestly wouldn't tell just anyone to watch it, totally understand. You can listen to this podcast. Doesn't matter. It'll be really fun. Uh, And The Wicker Man, great movie. Not that scary. Um, and you should watch it. Yeah, it's on Netflix right now, so go check that this out. This is a very similar episode to our Rosemary's Baby versus Hereditary episode in show, like show. many, many ways. Yep. Um, go back and watch the oldie. Mm-hmm. It's worth it. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Study your uh, Nick, history. Nick, do you have any shout outs? No. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't really have any personal ones, but since one of these movies is about Sweden, I want to give an RIP to Max von Sydow. 
One of the oh, best yeah. actors to ever live just passed away this week, oh. um, and he was a great Swedish actor. If you if you get a chance, you should watch his Igmar Bergman movies, which are um, the ones that have been like you know you've probably seen the Seventh Seal uh, made fun of in other movies and stuff. But classic Swedish films. Ooh, my mom sent an email yesterday. Or for, for our last episode, this she didn't our, get one in here. This is a recurring segment. Yeah. Called mom's email. It's pretty fun. My mom's email was kind of funny. So I'm not going to read the whole email, but she brought up a few things when we were talking about Austin Powers versus McGruber. She brought up the story I forgot to tell on it that when I was a kid, my mom wanted to was going to take me to Austin Powers. And my grandma didn't know what it was. And I think it was Austin Powers too. That's why you shagged me. And I was too... It, there were there were people in the line for the movie that felt like I was too young to be at it because I was. Yeah. And they said something and then my grandma kind of started believing maybe I was too young. And then I watched the whole movie and I was laughing and I was kind of quiet and they thought everything was normal. And then later I was like at the edge of the couch, like acting like I was humping it. And I said, I looked back at my grandma. I was like, Look at me, Bubby. I'm mini me or whatever, like because he's humping the laser. And then my mom was really embarrassed, and my grandma was really mad at her. Uh, and the other thing was, <laughs> she brought up a great point. Um, I wasn't gonna go to Redlands until Alec Smoley, who was our guest on the Awesome Powers versus McGruber episode, had gone there for a soccer trip and was thinking about applying there. And he told me about it. And then I got like scammed into going there by my parents. Um, Perfect. Yeah, and if he if he had never gone to Redlands, me and you wouldn't have become friends and had this podcast, dude. Wow. Thanks, Pretty sick. Alex All right, give us a synopsis of these two movies. Thanks, okay. Mom. So you said The Wicker Man is from 1976. I'm pretty sure it's or from it's 1973. 73? Yeah. Okay, 1973's The Wicker Man. The Wicker Man is the 1973 or 6 story of Officer Howie's investigation into the disappearance of a young girl who resides on Summer Isle, a small mm. island near Scotland. Howie quickly learns that the residents of Summer Isle are horny, weird, and hiding something. Howie is also very conservative, religious, and virginal. Mm. After, ta- after talking with a multitude of residents, including the Lord of Summer Isle himself, Howie comes to the hypothesis that the pagan rituals taking place on the island are leading to the May Day sacrifice of the young girl whose disappearance he's investigating. Howie disguises himself, takes someone place in the processional march to the May Day celebration, and rescues the young girl. She la- leads Howie away from the townsfolk to safety, except for she doesn't do that, and she's totally in on it, and Howie's hunch is wrong. Womp womp. To make their crops grow, they need a virginal man. Howie's lack of boning really ends up boning him in the end as he's <laughs> sacrificed to the pagan gods by burning alive inside a giant wicker statue of a man as the townsfolk offer him up to return a bountiful harvest in the fall and they just harmonize so sickly. That's right, y'all. So if you haven't had sex, go do that. And if you don't know how to harmonize, go to Summer Isle. Those people harmonize like crazy. Or listen to me and Nick because we harmonize we as well. We harmonize like, like, like no other. All right. Uh <clears throat> Midsommar, summer, midsummer, is a uh, more recent story of pagan sacrifice. Our main character is Danny, whose younger sister commits an insane murder suicide at the beginning of the film. Danny uh, leans on her distant but calloused boyfriend Christian for support as she follows Christian and his friends to their Swedish buddy Pele's childhood home, a pagan community, for their midsummer festivities. Drugs are involved. Real, real, uh, ritualistic suicide is involved. Love potions involving pubic hair baking and menstrual blood lemonade are involved. What? We find what out that, way? <laughs> that Christian is seriously just the worst, and Danny is eventually crowned the May Queen. Applause. It turns out that everyone's favorite Swedish buddy, Pele, actually just brought everyone as a sacrifice. So everyone is sacrificed, including Christian, whom our new May Queen chooses to be sewn alive into an eviscerated bear carcass and then burnt alive along with six dead bodies, most of whom were his friends, and also two living Swedish guys that do not like being burnt alive. Danny found a new family, and she smiles as Christian burns for being such a shitty boyfriend. Yeah. That's right. All you shitty boyfriends out there, myself included, you're on watch. Uh, anyways, yeah, we're doing these two movies because 
they're very, very similar if you watch them. And Midsommar was definitely influenced by The Wicker Man. Yeah, it's uh, another no one of those. There's no doubt about uh, that. Yeah, it's another one of those new movies takes from an old classic kind of thing. Yeah, and, and builds upon it, I think. Uh, so we are going to take these movies and break them down based on five categories and our rating scale. Uh, one to seven, one being the lowest, four being the middlest, and seven being the highest. What up, 420? Uh, nope. Get it? Because it's high? Oh. Yeah. Well, or or it's just the tallest. It did, seven did eat nine. Yeah, but seven is the, the greatest, is, so a seven is really good. Oh, Our fi- I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the seven, eight, nine, and uh, he Munchies. was really hungry. Okay. Don't yep. blame him. What are we starting um, with? All right, so we are going, <laughs> because I've heard some complaints from my co-host Nick, what else is new? We are going to go through spectacularity, eye candy, actoring, see it's not first always, Originality and legacy. Okay. Let's kick it off with spectacularity. Nicholas. Messing with my matrix, bro. Nicholas, why don't you start with Midsommar spectacularity? Okay. Uh, I think, okay, so I'm going to start off with my Explain rate. what it is. Spectacularity is uh, a mathematical formula. <laughs> yeah. It's very scientific. It's very scientific. I don't want to get into it right now. It is uh, the level of engagement in the movie. So how often are you feeling like maybe you want to look away from the screen if you're watching it at home? Um, how sucked into the movie are you? How does it keep your eyes and ears glued to the action? Um, and I give Midsummer a six. Mm. I don't think it's perfect. Out of seven, yeah. There are, there has, there's this quality in both movies, I think, where you kind of get taken out of it at times. Um, but Midsummer is maybe not to the same degree. Its length is it's it's actually a pretty long movie. Yeah, um, I watched the director's cut, so that was like two hours and forty five minutes. Oh really? The regular one's like, like two hours and twenty. It's two twelve or something like yeah. that. It's a little less than two hours and twenty. It's pretty long. Um, I mean, it's not like super long. Yeah, but the execution is pretty much flawless, where you don't really feel how long it is. Mm-hmm. Um, there are said. like very slow. <laughs> 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 there are very slow reveals of how odd what's happening is. Um, and then all of a sudden it's super sinister. Yeah. Like really it sneaks up on you. And that's exactly how you would feel if you were them. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, this is really so caught off guard by such this a is really odd. Yeah. I, like their food sucks. I don't like, I don't like that. It's sunny all the time. And then all of a sudden, boom, eviscerated bear carcass. And you're yeah. like, ah, yeah. You know, same as the audience. Yeah, that was the first moment it was creepy for sure. The bear carcass. Uh, Yeah, definitely. (laughs) uh, I'm going to let you guess based on what I say about it, what my score is. You're going to give it a seven. Yeah, it's a seven. No, I'm not even going to have you guess. I gave it a seven. I don't know how much more locked into a movie I could be than something like Midsommar or Hereditary. Like, I don't really want... Even though I don't like what I'm seeing sometimes, I'm not going to turn away. It's like the best feeling, though. Exactly. And, and especially the first time we no, watch it. No, it's not. It's, it's not, not the, the best, best feeling. feeling. But it's not the best... It, but it is like a feeling of like being... It's like being trapped in a book like that you don't want to stop uh, reading. That sounds really fun. Yeah. Yay. Being like trapped <laughs> in the book and like you don't know where to go. <laughs> you can't leave. Uh, we're all trapped in a book. The score is also... <laughs> <laughs> The score is also like incredibly eerie, and I love yes, that. The score is fantastic. I mean, this is it, it keeps your heart racing at every moment, um, despite it being. Oh, I already, I already said that. Um, he <laughs> knows how to hook you immediately too into a movie, and especially this one. Like you start Ari Aster? out, yeah, Ari Aster. Yeah. Um, you start at the writer and director of this and Hereditary. You start out with um, Danny's like freaking out and like and, and trying to have like a a conversation with her boyfriend while holding back tears and because she's freaked oh out God, about her dude. sister and then you get all this like character development right at the beginning about these two people and it, and it's really good and then all of a sudden like maybe like 10 minutes in it goes bang she calls and she's like ah! and sh- and you find out literally the most disturbing thing that could happen to a person um that they're their parents are killed by their suicidal S- younger sister. sister by- and she knew because she saw the message and she thought something was weird. And her boyfriend was telling her, Hey, your, your sister's an attention. Okay. Whore. So I was going to say this for later, but when she, so the, the, the intro to the movie, and this is why this movie, I wish we had a rewatchability category yeah. for this because 
like there are little things that you notice in this. So many clues that just give things away. But this is not really one of those. But kind of, the 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 beginning of the movie is Danny calling her our main character calling yeah, her family. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah right. 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 That's yeah. Yeah. It starts intro. with her it's leaving a ringing, voicemail for them. The ringing. Yeah. Right. Um, it it's also, really cool how they do that. It brings nine. Or, uh, it, uh, the the message counts to nine. And that um, nine is like nine, a central yeah. figure. Yeah. Anyways, she when that she calls, I don't care about it. You, she leaves a message, and as she's leaving a message, the camera pans to her parents in bed. Who they're seem breathing. To not, yeah, they're breathing. Oh, that is fucked up. Which means she so is was, calling them while they are still alive. Right. And had she called nine one one immediately well, after? Somehow they don't hear the call. Like I think they're. I just think like, it's maybe because they're, they're unconscious. I think it's because they're unconscious yeah. because of the gas. Yeah. So the sister kills them by. By pumping gas from the car. Oh, it's like the, the most it's, disturbing it's way. And she tapes it to her mouth, and she's got puke all over herself it's, because it's of it. It's horrible. But yeah. but what I'm getting at is the family is alive still, possibly brain dead, but alive. And Christian says it's all fine. Her next call is to her boyfriend, who's like, "It's fine, babe. You're freaking out." Yeah, you're. You don't need he, to. She's like taken out of van and shit, and like he uh, basically kills her family. Yeah, because yeah. she doesn't call anybody. She could call. I mean, it's just right like a after. constant theme that he doesn't like express enough yeah. empathy, and that's and she feels alone because of that. But what I, my whole point is, when you get to that moment, it's like right right at the beginning, and then it and it's like boom boom, and then the violin comes in and it shows Midsommar and the it like pans above them and it shows the title. You're like, okay, I'm in this movie. I'm going to hate myself for watching this, but I'm in. And the, yeah. and it just never really slows down. I don't think there's a single moment that I'm like taken out of. It's also the only scene um, shot in the winter and the only scene that takes place in the dark. Uh, yeah. Well, no, there are multiple scenes in the dark. There are only like two or three. There's like five. Mm-mm. There are like five scenes in the dark. Google it, dude. Okay, maybe three. Um, I'll agree with you. But what, what, I, what I'm saying is like the movie is just moving at like 100 miles per hour, even <laughs> though... Even though there will be like moments where it's just about their relationship and stuff, but that stuff is so highly engaging and really realistic to relationships. Yeah. So oh, I'm giving God. it a seven, what dude. I, I couldn't are you, <laughs> Danny. Who I, I'm dating a Danny, dude. What do you expect? Uh, yeah, man. So I gave it a seven. Uh, Nick gave it a six. Let's talk about the Wicker Man spectacularity. What did you um, give it? I gave it an average of four. Okay. I think okay. it was, I think, and I don't mean that as a slight against the movie. I think it was engaging. I thought it was going to be more disturbing than it was. Um, but I think it was a lot smarter than I expected it to right. be. It is. Um, what I, what I like about Midsommar that's not so much in, in the Wicker Man is like, I just feel like back in the day when they made movies, they just didn't, even if it was a mystery type of movie or a, or this kind of thriller or horror, they didn't sprinkle in a lot of clues to keep you like, ooh, I need to rewatch this afterwards. Yeah. It was more like this is an interesting story that no one had really done. Um, yeah, and then it gets real like batty all of a sudden. Yeah. What I do think helps it is like how eccentric and fun the Scottish people of Summer yeah. Isle are. They're like, I didn't expect it. I thought they were going to be creepier. They were m- more like heathens and that was like and there were like funny heathens the guy who owns the uh bar and like inn that he's staying in is hilarious and they have the best accents um i'm not a real i'm here's one thing didn't expect it to be a musical and i am not a fan of any of the musical parts except for like one uh, I especially didn't really enjoy the scene where the girl's like naked next to him, next door to him, and like the, banging the wall. And he's like, infamous, ah, and the he's infamous like feeling drum, lust. Yeah, the yeah. like drum dancing. Nude yeah. Scene. Funny story about that scene. Yeah. She, Let's hear it. Um, Britt Eklund, I think is her name. Mm-hmm. She's a pretty famous actress. Mm-hmm. Um, she She's did, definitely hot. She is. She did not know that she would be, um, she would have a double, but that's a oh. butt double. That was a double? It's her front, but a butt double. And she was like, that pic- is such a common thing. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, the, the, she Show was just, butt, she just felt weird about it, and she and they ended up doing a butt double. Yeah. But she thought she was just going to not have a butt scene, but yeah. they used a butt double. Yeah. They also used a voice double for her. Oh, interesting. But that's like, I really don't like maybe. that because it's like A&R or whatever. But maybe, I, I, maybe they ADR. did. Maybe they mm. didn't. Okay. She she's like not sure. Anyways, a super weird random tangent, but um 
Yeah, I agree. Like it's it's kind of funky that it has these musical bits in it. It takes you out of it a bit, but the twist in the Wicker Man is so famous and like infamous. Yeah. And if you don't know I knew what I knew about it. I mean, I I knew I didn't know that Rowan would be the one to really lead him yeah. to that. And I kind of, when she was on the mountain, I'm like, yeah, that's what's happening. I did know, obviously, that he was going to be like burned alive burned or alive something. In the Wicker Man. I thought there was going to be more fucked up things happening. And I know that in the remake to The Wicker Man, they put a lot more like disturbing stuff. Not really. It's a stupid idiot movie for, yeah. for more. I mean, that's what I've been it's told. It's hilarious. Oh, but uh, on the point of the musical, I like the soundtrack. The soundtrack was cool. It was like rock from the. Uh, from the it was actually kind of more like 60s rock. Yeah, rock. Folk. I will say the scene where he's chasing Rowan into the cave and they're yeah. all chasing him is like completely missed the mood of the scene it's like it felt like i, felt I like mentioned Scooby this multiple times yeah it's scooby-doo or like hard day's night when yeah. they're all like chasing them um i think it's so interesting when you don't know what it's about and i think that helps the engagement level that's why it's an average one for yeah. me uh I, d- I will say the only time my heart raced is when they're doing the chop chop and you go in between oh the swords God, yeah. or whatever. And I was like, dude, I don't like this. This is a, the, like a Russian roulette that's not by chance. I really it's like about... the school yard scene or like the school scene too. Oh, me too. Of... I, I thought that was incredible. Like, I just think that it's um, it's really good. I, I gave it a five, but I had it written down as a four before. I'm just like thinking of like every movie I've seen. I wasn't like more engaged than the average movie. I was right in the average setting. But for I that. love like old weird horror movies like this though. So Clearly, I gave it dude. one more point. Ah, that's fair. I just think it that the overall you. path to the end is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, even if there are scenes that take you out of it. Yeah, whatever toots your butt, dude. I do not like the the dancey pat on the wall butt double scene. Uh, there were like multiple musical scenes I was not. That's the a only fan one of. I didn't like. Yeah, same. That was the only one I actively didn't like. Yeah. Some of the other ones I was like, eh, this doesn't need to be a musical. Dude, but it's kind the, of fun. The like uh, I love when they're singing about the landlord's daughter. The landlord's daughter. But that I didn't like so at that creepy. time I didn't think it was a musical. It, I thought they were just it's singing. It's not a like, musical. The movie's not a musical. They're if just, you look on IMDb, it's like labeled at one of the one of its genres is musical. And there are multiple, what? there are at least five scenes where people are singing. It's not a musical. It kind of is. It's just, it's one of those musicals I do like, though, that have like non musical moments. Musicals don't need to be singing the whole time. In this category, before we move on, I do also want to say that you watched the 87 minute long version. Yeah. So there's a director's cut. This movie yeah. is infamous for having all of these weird, like, scenes that they filmed that mm. sound really cool but aren't in the this, movie yeah. and like some of them were lost there's a director's cut that's like uh significantly longer like 30 40 minutes longer but it, i don't know if it'd be better or not who knows fair the 87 minutes definitely helps the spectacular yeah i i agree i i wasn't like bored for too long okay so that's a five from nick and a yeah. four from me let's move on to our next category eye candy Eye candy is just where we're talking about the visual elements of a movie. Um, so uh, I will start it with The Wicker Man. I okay. think this could be kind of a quick conversation about this. You don't have to tell me twice. I gave it a five out of out of oh, seven weird. because I think that for the time period, like Kubrick had been making, Kubrick and Hitchcock were making incredible movies yeah. around that time or before that. But I do think that this was visually a good movie. I thought it was edited really well. I thought the Dude, filming how- at the beginning when he's meeting the townspeople was cool. It was like a yeah. tracking shot through them um it's pretty nice to look at and nothing is like bad Mm-mm. uh uh i really enjoyed the opening shot of scotland um and how secluded they are at the summer isle i thought that was really cool with yeah. him on in the plane um yeah i, I like, like the, the moment when everyone pops up with the animal hats or the animal yeah, uh dude, masks great yeah that's the moment where i was like oh shit this movie's turning around yeah um I really did. Here's there's only one thing that I didn't like visually, and it was so quick that I just am being nitpicky. It was like the slow motion effect they did during the graveyard orgy scene at the beginning. Yeah, just looked weird, and it didn't need to be in slow mo. And I don't like slow mo. I, I it almost made you feel like he was 
drugged or something. Yeah, right. And I think that was kind of the point, but he hadn't had it anything he took a couple he, sips of beer yeah he had like a beer but maybe they drugged i him. mean but he is like a fucking puss <laughs> yeah he's deeply yeah. officer howie is deeply religious mm-hmm. in this movie and you kind of learn that at and the same time like you learn that at a great time you don't know he is and then all of a sudden in that tavern in the 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 i guess it's a tavern the inn that yeah. he stays at you're like oh. he announces it he's like nope i'm set it's stopping this all yes. i'm like yeah he's pretty good in that uh, I don't know. This What'd is you our get it? this is our second Edward Woodward movie. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hot He's Fuzz. In Hot Fuzz. Yeah. Uh, I gave eye candy for Wicker Man a four. Um, using jarring, odd imagery to mess with you is definitely a theme. But uh, the Wicker Man started it. I just don't think that it's amazing. So I I kind of gave it an average score. Yeah. Um, I just because of scenes like the slow motion scene, like. I don't know, like, the costuming doesn't stick out to me, really. Yeah. It looks sort of not, um, like, the best. I don't know. That that first scene where he's flying the seaplane is just too long. It but is But I long. guess it does but set up that sequence. it's far away. I don't know. I got bored in that part. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if it ages super well. However, I don't know how they got that last scene of the Wicker Man crumbling to be right at sunset. But oh, that man. scene is amazing super looking. pretty. Yeah, I mean, it, it is beautiful. It's amazing looking. On it, I mean, I, I like, I think it was pretty, I didn't feel like it was too outdated. And that was what I liked about it. And I yeah. usually really don't like that. I'm glad, man. Um, yeah, so that's a five for me and a four from Nick. Let's talk about Midsommar uh, eye candy. So... You know, I wanted to give it lower, but uh, this is a seven. Like, the, for me, I this is visually one of the most incredible movies I've seen too. in the last few years. This movie was made on a nine to ten million dollar budget. He built all of the building. I mean, the production design is unreal. He built all those buildings for the movie. Just like he built the house in Hereditary, or they built the insides or whatever of the house for Hered- Hereditary. I think um, That's so the crazy. camera work in Hereditary is really cool how it moves through the house. But this is like him messing around with shots that have probably, when he was in film school, were probably swimming through his head. And I think there's a lot of really, really um, uh, creative shots that I had never seen before. Um, his, mm. The guy, the cinematographer for him, Powell uh, Pogor, Pogorzelski, I think it's going to be like, if if I could pronounce his name, I think this guy's going to be huge. Like, this is going to be one of the greatest cinematographers because he's starting out just great. Not if no one can great. pronounce his name. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. If we can figure it out. I say uh, <laughs> in the director's cut, even those scenes, it's a lot of times the director's cut, a lot of the scenes that are pulled out of it of movies end up not being as good because they weren't really like edited as well. Or I I don't know. I've just felt that way. I think there were some really, there's like a really cool part when they're driving into the, uh, when they're driving away from the airport or whatever, there's a longer scene with them talking in the car and it's panning back and forth in the windshield. And it's really cool. Um, Dang, I should have watched that. Yeah, the way that he films and represent the way that he does the family death scene when you when it reveals the firefighters going in is incredible. Like it is, it's haunting, and it's that's the big so thing disturbing. about this movie is there's so many images that I wish I didn't see, but they're so beautifully made. Yeah, that they're going to stick in my head. Uh, the upside down shot going into the village. And then it inverts or whatever when you see where they're going, like the Highland Hall or whatever. Oh, yeah. It's everything is inverted and then they like flip it. There's the shot of her crying, getting up from talking to Pele in the apartment and walking into the bathroom. And then it's it goes above the bathroom and she's in the airplane bathroom. That oh, editing is that just like is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the, all the stuff he did with... I, so I've never done psychedelics, but I've been told by people that have and saw this movie that it's very, very accurate to what it feels and looks like. And I think that he was very visually creative with the effects that he was using mm-hmm. with it. You know, the trees are breathing and moving in the background and waving. When you look, when she's in her Mayflower suit, I mean, the costuming is great, but um, when she's in the Mayflower suit, the flower on top of her head is pulsating. Some people, if you look at their their outfits, some of the flowers are spinning on them. Like, you just like, there's so much to see. Um, 
Yeah. I, I there's one one last thing. I really, really like how he films the scene where they fight when she finds out that he might be going to Sweden and they come back from the party and they film him seated, seated down in the mirror with her. And so you're seeing him through the mirror and she's standing there. It's just an incredible shot. And it like shows the distance like the distance between them. And it's like you, if there were any words in that scene, I would know exactly what right. it's supposed to mean. If there was no context before. You would know what's going on in their right. relationship. He's just a master. Ari Aster is a master of of symbolism. Yeah. And you said pretty much everything I would say, but I love me some symbolism. Yeah. And uh, he sprinkles them through. Aside from you know, Midsummer is visually stunning, but the costuming, like you said, I think it's a very underrated part of this movie because mm-hmm. he uses costuming in a very symbolic sense. Like, I don't know, I, like it, it, everything has to be intentional, but um, Danny F- Florence Pugh's costumes in this are, they have to be intentionally drab. Yeah. And I, th- they're like very similar to the kinds of things that the the people wear the whole time they're sort of more loose fitting like yeah like this certain type of linen that looks similar to what they're wearing oh wow i've never even thought about that um and i don't know if they become what she wears becomes more light as things like lighter in color as things go on but she does start to wear what other people are wearing she also starts to become more flower like as things go on she starts to she has visions of turning into like plants when she's Mm. high on psychedelics and those visions become more intense as she becomes more ingrained in the culture of this, this, uh, those are great uh, points. Whatever it is. Commune, I guess you'd call it. Um, the other thing is that I just wanted to talk about for costuming for eye candy, because you talked about everything else is that somehow he makes normal clothes seem super weird by the end of this movie. Yeah. I like, don't there know. There was a like, scene where where when everyone else is pretty much, and I think it's because everyone that wears normal clothes kind of dies as the movie goes yeah. along, and then all of a sudden you're just left with Christian, and he's the only one wearing a shirt and jeans. Right. And he looks slowly. They all he looks become so part of weird. It. Yeah, he does. There's this scene where I was like, why does he look so weird? He just looks. He also wears like the biggest collars. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He just is like such a tool. Yeah, he does. God, he's the worst, dude. Like an artful tool. But yeah, yeah, I also gave it a seven. I honestly think it should have been up for cinematography. And this year was, cr- this was like one of the better years of cinematography. A lot of greats and Roger Deakins rightfully won. But I just, this was incredible. Um, yeah. It, it's visually stunning. And if you're disturbed by the movie, it's still worth it for how, and it, like, you know, like Alec, my roommate, liked the movie but like had a lot of problems with it and he was really excited but when cinema sins did it i don't care about cinema sins but i think regardless the movie is visually incredible yeah uh, so double so seven from me and a seven from nick double let's sevens. move on to our next category which is actoring actoring is where we talk about um their performances uh, and how the actors performed, and then also whether the directors and writers gave them the tools that they needed to perform as well as possible. Uh, Nick, why don't you get started on uh, Midsommar since we're on that? Okay, Ari Aster is so good at getting women to scream in a way that <laughs> is disturbing. And it's like women what is that, that people aren't... Like, people like Tony Collette before Hereditary, yeah. but no one was like, Tony Collette's one of the best actresses alive. And then you see Hereditary and you're like, what? How did she have this in her yeah. this whole and time? Florence Pugh and then Florence Pugh is Pugh's 22 years old, and she's like, or 23 or something, and she is just she's half unbelievable. Yes, yeah, she... fuck, gross. Um, yeah. uh, d- she is incredible. I don't think anyone is going to be winning an Oscar for this one. They didn't, but like, you know my point. I mean, she was nominated for Little Women as supporting actress, and I thought this was the better performance of the year by her. I think she's really good, but I don't think she's amazing. I gave it a five overall Mm. because I don't think that anyone is fantastic, but that's not really the point of the movie. Yeah. Although no one is also, also no one is bad. Yeah. So I think that's fair to give it slightly above. The boyfriend is so good at sucking. He's he's really good actor. And I wasn't excited. So I gave, uh, 
I gave it a six, and I actually think Florence Pugh's acting is unbelievable. And I think that she establishes it in the first scene where she is quietly crying on the phone while talking, at, trying to act like she's not crying on the phone while trying to act normal and like trying to just, she just wants to talk to Christian and um, she's like crime and she's like, I, I know I'm not, you know, yeah. I, it's fine. I, like I just wanted to, and it's like so believably awkward in that way. And then there's just like her guttural, guttural crying is just like oh, unreal. It's, it's so like, I've never seen crying like that on screen. And I don't, at first I would be like, wow, would people actually do that? And it's like, that is when you are at the deepest level of your emotions. You are letting and her everything out. Her whole family out. is pulled out from under her. And yeah. She's already not happy. Oh, and I am, she does it later in the movie when she's like, she's walking away and, and she has to like go to the side, like after they go to the, um, the old people suicide scene. Mm-hmm. And she like, she's like holding it. She's like, <gasps> and then like starts doing it. And it is, it's crazy good. I, she's like, Everything that she does with her boyfriend is really yeah. The level of grief that she's able to convey is just it, like and just her frustration with him, yeah. like just trying to get through to him. He's the I thought worst. Jack Jack Raynor. I honestly didn't expect him to be that good in the movie, and when I rewatched it, I thought his performance was incredible. Very subtly, um, it's, the worst person. Yeah, exactly. He's not like a he's not like an openly abusive person. He's like uh, an emotionally abusive person. Yeah. Um, I thought Will Poulter, who Clay, uh, one of our past guests, uh, he fucking hates him and calls him eyebrows because he's got weird eyebrows. And does he? I guess yeah. he does. He looks um, like Sid from Toy Story. He definitely looks like Sid from Toy Story. I thought he, I didn't expect him to be as funny as he is. I think he's the great comedic. Uh, uh, break for this movie. Uh, he's especially really funny when they f- are doing shrooms and he's like, Oh, no, no, no. That's a new person. I don't want any new people. Guys, lay down. Lay down. Everyone lay down. <laughs> Everyone lay down. Uh, <laughs> I love the part when he go when they go into the village and he goes, So we're stopping in Waco before uh, <laughs> Pele's village? This is a great line. I love it where he's talking about the Lyme disease oh, with his I grandpa and he's like, that. He's fucked. Yeah, the Waco. So that's it's a, a great cult. reference because they had to postpone the the like it's so reminiscent of the Wicker Man, but that's a great reference because they had to postpone the release of Wicker Man because because of the Waco yeah. Um, thing. Yeah, uh, it's pretty weird if you want to look it up. I don't think so. I, I didn't give it a seven because I I, I don't <laughs> it's an like understatement. I don't like the guy who plays Josh that much, William Jackson Harper. I didn't think he was that uh, he was, like from, effective um, from the show with Dak Shepard's wife, Kristen Bell. Oh, good place. I don't good watch place. that. Good place. Yeah. Oh, yep. he's in that. He's nice. In the good place. Yeah. I mean, he's okay in this. He's not bad. Uh, same with like the guy who plays Pele. I can't tell if he's a good actor or not. Everyone is just kind of understated, and I th- think it's on purpose. It works for some people, and I don't. Th- yeah. Grandma Siv. Out of all the villagers, Grandma Siv is incredible. Yeah. A like, great acting. So I give it a six out of uh, out of seven. I I was kind of close to giving it a five, like a five. Nick. Uh, what about the Wicker Man? Okay, Christopher Lee is excellent. Edward Woodward... God, that's hard to say. Christopher Lee is excellent. Edward Woodward... He almost doesn't look like Christopher Lee when you're first watching it. It's only no. when he gives the speech at the end, you're like, yeah, that's yeah, Saruman. Dude. Oh my God, he's so good in this. Edward yeah. Woodward is good, and everyone else is all right. Um, yeah. Sergeant Howie is such a tragic character. Yeah. But he's kind of an asshole the whole way through. He he is, and he moves in this like really fast, like... Mm-hmm. Like, um, uh, like yeah, impulsive. The way, yeah, he way, needs to go through. Yeah, but it's great because it's almost like he can't contain himself. He's just like all pent up energy. He's so. And he's he's also so good at everything. like. Lo- yeah, exactly. He's so good at being like annoyed as fuck. He's been like, dropped into the worst possible scenario. When she's for him. like, "Poor little beetle," and he's like, "He's like, poor little beetle. Why are you doing this to it?" <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, he's, <laughs> the classroom scene. He's so good at acting in. Oh, man. So I gave it a four because I just think outside of him and Christopher Lee, everyone else is like, eh. Britt Eklund is pretty good. 
one thing I really like about it, I, I was so close to giving it a four as well, but I like gave it a five because what I, I really like the villagers. I think the villagers are really funny. You know, funny. a lot of those people are literally just villagers? Yeah, but from another village. I thought it was really funny at the beginning no, where they're, they're like... not actors. They're just people. Oh, that's funny. But from another village, I mean, they, they say at the beginning, like, thank you to the people of Summer Isle for helping oh, with this. Oh, but that's like, a joke. Yeah, definitely a joke. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're not from Summer Isle. But oh, they're yeah. like they're just like from the island. They yeah, they it seem on. like they seem like I- island villagers in in Scotland. Just carnies. <laughs> they are kind of <laughs> like that. Um, I don't know. I thought they were all really good. I like the the way that they react to his anger is great, and that's what I re- the actoring. I think it's the directing that works, and it's weird because this director only did like two other movies, yeah. and two of two of his three movies have wicker in the title and have to do with something like that. There's one called the wicker tree. That was like a 3.5 on IMDb. (laughs) What? Um, I just love the way that they, the villagers mess with him. And I think that's really good directing and acting. Yeah. I think it really works. Uh, My favorite is the innkeeper bar, bar keeper. Like the, uh, he's just so funny and he has like such a funny voice. Yeah. Um, the main guy is pretty good. I guess he's really famous for being the equalizer. Yeah, after the this movie got him the role as the equalizer. Oh, interesting. I mean, Christopher Lee is amazing. RIP to him. He he's did one this of the movie best for actors free. ever. Christopher Lee. I know, I know, and he was like free. and then he like he gave some of his money to the yeah. production and stuff. Yeah, I mean, this movie like almost didn't get made. It had like no budget. I was crazy. I also really like the the actress who plays the teacher. Diane, yes. uh, Diane Salento. She's really good. She's really good. Too. Um, the whole s- the classroom Dang, scene I'm is like my favorite. I should scene. give it a five now. I um, mean, yeah, I just like I was pleasantly surprised by the acting. I'm gonna give it a five. Well, well, let's move on to our next category. So Nick and I both gave fives to The Wicker Man. Um, <laughs> and so our next category is originality. Originality okay. is where we talk about just how clever the movie uh, was, whether it needed to be made, uh, especially if it's based off of source material or previous things. Um, just sort of things like that. We're talking about all of those and how it stands out in its genre. You so, lead off. Okay. I gave The Wicker Man a six. Uh, and I was very close to giving it a seven until I knew, until I found out that it's based off of a book called Ritual. And I think oh, it's it like really? really, really similar to the book. Hmm. Um, I really like, as we were mentioning, the prescript about the people of Summer Isle. I yeah. love whenever they do that. There's a, they do that famously in Fargo where they tell you that yeah. it's all real, but it's not, um, but it's not, but there's a movie. There was a real life story where this Japanese person had watched Fargo and thought it was real and thought there was buried treasure in the United States. And she came all the way to the United States and she was not prepared for the North Dakota winter and she was searching for it and she was just like kind of clueless about society and she ended up freezing to death in the forest and the local sheriffs found it. But anyways, I so love when the they do man. that. Yeah, I love when they do that. Um, he's also a famous uh, screenwriter. Uh, he did uh, a- Anthony Schaffer or Schaefer. He did Hitchcock's uh, Frenzy, which I really want to watch. Um, I think I really love the ideas in this movie. Like I love that the I- that the town is obsessed with what we as as our society would call indecent behavior. Yeah. Um I think it's like especially great in that classroom scene. It's very different than the village in Midsommar because they're more like hippie free spirited in this. Yeah. It's all like they being more, heathen. They are more, um, they're pagan. Yeah. They're like, they're like really, mm-hmm. really pagan. Yeah. People. And it's like, it's just such a cool. You know, it was awesome. The movie. Beatles scene is like foreshadowing of how he's going to, the beetle goes, it's tied. Uh, yeah. There's a beetle that's leg is tied to string. That's tied to this nail and it goes round and round until it gets closer to the needle and that, or the nail. And that's what happens to him. He goes round and round until he gets stuck in the thing. He's yeah. been, tra- they set up the whole thing. It's yeah. kind of like shutter Island. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a that. little bit. It, the twist is huge. Yeah. That twist is so good. Yeah. It's really, and well it's done. very original. And it inspired so many other movies about yeah. communes and cults and yeah, like paganism and and ritualistic sacrifice and all of these things that just over time have like kind of uh, blossomed out from this movie. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of the thing that I didn't think it was going to be about. 
that I thought was really interesting is like it's about a really devout Christian yeah. who's trying to keep his faith as best as possible while surrounded by what he would call heathens. Yeah, he's dropped into his worst nightmare. And, yeah. And he loses he loses himself because he doesn't yeah. act like a Christian should. He, he stops losing his ability to actually investigate properly and see yeah. everything. So yeah. He becomes him. so obsessed with, with what he thinks is right. And uh, I don't know. I doubt it, considering you're all raving mad. Is such and a great like, line. And he like makes the little cross because he's yeah. so like upset. So, did you hear about what the cross thing? He no. came back like years. The actor came back like years later. I think like 10 years or something later to kind of like just see it. Because it was like an important thing for the people that made it. And he found that cross. Oh, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it stayed intact. That's so Not cool. Creepy. It's yeah. like. The movie is almost intentionally bland in some ways, mm -hmm. but so weird. And then all the details really clear at the end in this twist. And it's just like, it is. It's kind of like Shutter Island. I feel like it's also, both of these movies are very similar to, did you ever read the short story, The Lottery, when you were a kid? No. About the town people who every year they do a lottery and they choose one person um, to be stoned to death. The no. whole the whole town stones that person to death, like throws rocks at them until yeah. they die for the good of their harvest, to keep their harvest no. going. And both of these movies are about that. And I think uh, everything is more or less like based off of that. It's a great story. The coolest, the, like the coolest part of this movie is where Officer Howie to to the to Lord Summer Isle is like you're next. Yeah, you're next. If this doesn't work, you're next. Right. And you could see it in Christopher Lee is so good at conveying this. Like, so smart. I know I'm next, but I'm not gonna. But you're. But I'm right. Yeah. Well, he says they will prevail. He says he shouts something like they will not heal or something. Yeah. Like if they if they do choose him, doesn't matter because they will not. They know what they're supposed to do. Yeah. They will not fail. That's what he says. Yeah. Dude, the ah. speech that he gives, and then the speech that. Oh, how he oh, gives. Christ. Yeah, it's so good. I, it's incredible. I wanted to uh, like maybe do that at the end, but I just couldn't uh, figure it out. That's so, yeah, um, I gave it a six. What did you give it? I also gave it a six. Okay. And I nice. also gave Midsummer a six. Nice. Okay. Um, what did I give? It should have been made, and it was made. It does an excellent job of taking the original Wicker Man and making the ideas uh, like more palpable, more original. Um, it takes this like female empowerment, like breakup story and inserts it into the, the, that like mold of having this commune and what it would be like if your whole family died. And then all you had was this calloused a-hole and then you found a community that valued things that all of a sudden were pretty appealing to you. And then you were like, you know what? Fuck I am the guy. May Queen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she's kind of proud of it. Um, I agree. I think this is one of those rare movies that is clearly based on a lot of other things because he loves, you know, yeah. that's why we did Hereditary versus Rosemary's Baby. He's very inspired by classic horror films. Yeah. But I think that Ari Aster is that rare breed of, like, screenwriter that can build upon it to a degree where you're like... You don't blame it for being based off of it something else. It pays homage. It doesn't yeah. steal. It, it it literally is just paying homage to this movie. To, yeah. To Wicker Man. I mean, I gave it a six as well. I think that the way that he he lays out the whole movie with the mural at the beginning. Yep. He shows you the mural yep. of what's going to happen, and then he has some kind. He kind of has this like commentary on what Earth was, where it's like it's completely. Uh, there's the the. Oh, and it shows the trees and everything. And then it's just like, bam, phone call. And there's oh, lights yeah. everywhere and there's everything. And it's kind of like about how Earth and how developments and technology of kind of like what they've done to our culture. Um, uh, he just lays out clues left and right. And they're very cleverly written clues. Yeah. They're not to a point where you would really figure out the movie, but he's putting it in front of you. Yeah. Um, I remember reading about this like like right after I saw it the first time. I remember just nonstop for like uh, two weeks just reading everything I could about it because I was mm. like, this movie is so thought provoking and crazy. Um, I like the line I remember like afterwards. Pele says to him in one in the first scene that you see Pele and Christian and all those guys. He says. Don't forget about all the Swedish women you could be impregnating. And then he impregnates a Swedish woman. Oh, yeah. And then there's like, I wrote that. Mm. So the relationship aspects of the, in the movie are really, really thought out and well written. He kind of like throws in this relationship tale into this horror. Yeah. Um, 
sort of horror. Uh, the scene where she has to, but what I was mentioning earlier, the scene where they come back from the party and he clearly was in the wrong for not telling her about Sweden. And then she's just trying to talk to him and he's like, I want to leave. And then she has to apologize to him to have him stay is heartbreaking and believable. There's the, I forgot to remind when, when the person like talks about, uh, his uh her birthday oh no no when he goes up and he's like you think i would forget about your birthday or whatever and it's like oh it's okay i should have reminded him or something yeah. about her own birthday um there's a really I'm, i won't talk about it too much but the, in the direct three and a half years or something he, yeah well he says they've been together for four almost oh, four yeah. years but he says three and a half um there's this really cool scene in the director's cut where they get in this big, big fight at night in the village. And it's about the difference between her. He's saying, oh, Danny, you're always so altruistic in your way. Like you think that you're you're doing good for everyone left and right, but it's really conniving. And it's getting into the difference between being altruistic and being conniving, like setting people up for failure. And that's what he always feels like is happening to him. He's arguing about her giving him flowers or whatever when she randomly mm-hmm. gives him flowers. It's really good. I think then he he then he flips that whole thing. And then it becomes this cathartic breakup movie. Like yeah. the most disturbing way they could have a breakup movie. Um, it's about losing your family and your identity and being slowly manipulated into having a new family and culture where the people will like share your pain for the first time in her life. Because she's clearly felt so alone with yeah. her pain. Her boyfriend was forced to stay in a relationship with her when he didn't want to be and then he doesn't feel her pain and then she's with a bunch of people who literally try to feel the pain as she's having she stays there she never brilliant she never has to do never has to be alone ever again yeah everyone does everything for everyone else yeah in the community yeah and I, I mean, we didn't really talk about this with the Wicker Man, but the research into these different religions and these cults and stuff are so well done in both these movies. And what I love about this one is like Ari Aster, in the, especially you could see in the director's cut, it's so much more about the religious aspects of the movie. Mm. And, it, and it's cool how he lays that out. And I think it's like incredibly brilliant, but it's not like the most original thing. So I'll give it a six out of seven. Yeah. And you gave it a six as well. I gave it a six as well. All right, let's move on to our last category then. Our legacy. last category is legacy. It's kind of about like, well, we wanted to bring in a new type of thing about this. Generally, we're mostly just talking about like, will this movie be talked about? Right. Has it been talked about? What is going to be its legacy in the history of movies? But also, I kind of want to talk about with movies that are so thought provoking and disturbing like these, like, does it have these lasting thoughts in your head? Does it make you like think about it a lot afterwards? Yeah. So I, we could start with Midsommar. So Midsommar, I gave a five. Okay. Midsummer, I gave a five because of the kind of new, that new kind of take we're trying to, to have because Midsummer is such a new movie that just came out last year. It's yeah. not, doesn't have much of a legacy. Um, people don't like it that much. Only yeah, it's 63% not very popular. of audiences liked the movie. I don't blame them. I, mean, I think a lot of people feel awful afterwards. Critics really liked it, mm-hmm. kind of. Mm-hmm sort of liked it like 80 something ish on yeah. Rotten Tomatoes but I mean that's just one metric yeah. um, it just doesn't have too much of a legacy but um, it makes you think about it afterwards and I love rewatching the movie even though it's awful it's yeah. just such a great like it's just such a great story and the symbols are so deep and there's so much more to explore in it the more you watch it it's awesome yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a good way of putting it because I think like you were saying, like it would be nice if we had a rewatchability category. And I think this kind of is because like what is its legacy going to be to you? And even though this movie is so disturbing, like I really didn't really want to rewatch it. I'm glad I did because I picked up on a lot more and I love that. Um, honestly, the meme, this movie was memed more. Like it mm-hmm. will survive in meme culture yeah. more than that. And part of that is actually not just like, like how people reacted. It's just that A24 is super good at social media. That's why they are absolutely killing it in the indie realm. 
Um, but also, it's like funny that Tony or that uh, Florence Pugh wasn't nominated for this, but we still and it wasn't nominated for anything. But we still get like Janelle Monae wearing the May Queen outfit while doing her weird ass bizarre like number at the beginning of the Oscars. Oh, that's where she. That's why so, she did that. Yeah, lived on. Um, I, the thing is, you're right. Critics it got 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. They got a 72 on Metacritic, which isn't very high. And the audience score was really low. I think it's really hard for a lot of people to watch this, and I don't blame them. Yeah. And I know, like, I was talking to my friend Clay afterwards, and he had just seen it, and he was like, I, you know, he's, he's like, man, like, fuck that movie. Like, I think he liked it a lot, but he yeah. was like, how can you, like, say that you love that movie? When it just makes you feel like that afterwards. I was like, dude, because it's like incredibly made. I like fucked up movies. Yeah. Um, that's the whole point. It made $39 million, which is not great, uh, but it's not bad considering it only costs $9 million to make. Right. Uh, I don't think it really changed movie culture like Hereditary did. Hereditary was like, hey, dude, horror movies could be really artfully done even if they're the most terrifying ever. But it stuck with me. For a very long time. Like, it still... There are images in it that will never go away. And there are... I'm stuck still thinking about... Nick and I had, like, a long conversation before this about what some of the scenes meant. Yeah. And no one really knows. And that's what's great about it. So I'm giving it a four. I'm going to be fair that it's, like, kind of in the middle because it's brought down by how objectively... You gave it a four? Yeah. Yeah, And I think in a few years, it could be a six or could be a two. But I... For me... It is really powerful, and I'm and and I had like right when I came back, Alec and I had like a little bit of a discussion about it and kind of an argument because he f- felt like in the end it was more simple than he expected it to be, and for me it was like I couldn't stop thinking about certain aspects, Interesting. especially the fact that it's just a hardcore breakup movie. Yeah. Uh, so I gave it a four. Nick gave it a five. Uh, what about the Wicker Man? For I gave Legacy? the Wicker Man a six because yeah. it is. This is another yeah, one of those episodes up, where we're comparing something that is derivative of something else, and mm. Wicker Man is the der- derivator. The derivative derivative No, derivative. The derivation. Deriv- the derivation. Deriv- deriv- oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's just an iconic movie. Yeah. I mean. You're like the other movie that we're talking about pays homage to this movie, and it has the funniest remake, just the funniest. Yeah, I've never seen that. Thank God. You've it's tried to get me to watch it so multiple funny. times. Yeah. Oh, the bees is all I know. About oh, it. Oh, 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 the bees. So they kill uh, him by putting a bee helmet on him. No, he lives. Oh, it's stupid. I mean, it's, I think you're. Right. I think you're right. I mean, I, like the main thing is that it's super iconic. Yeah, and um, I, I, I had never seen it, but I knew a lot about it and right. knew I would like it going into it, and I did like it more than I thought. Um, and there were scenes that stuck with me after, like the scene where where Officer Howie is like, "You're next. They're coming for you next. Right. If this doesn't work for me, you know they're gonna come for you." And then there's Christopher Lee. Just you can just see him where he's they like, "Will not fail." Yeah. Yeah. But he's like, he's right, but it won't fail. Yeah. I, the, okay. So I gave it a six as well. I think it's really famous and iconic. What, what knocks it from being a seven, um, for me is that I kind of had expected it to be more disturbing than it was. And I kind of expected the religious, like the pagan aspect of it to be more fleshed out. If some something needed to build on it, like Midsommar needed to build on it, I thought it would be that. I don't think, even though I know it's iconic, I don't think it's one of those necessary classic movies to watch. I disagree. I, yeah, for me, I just like, I, I've seen a lot of classic movies and I don't know if it stands out as one of the like best horrors or, I mean, like I Psycho and Rosemary's Baby and I think I enjoyed it a little more than Rosemary's Baby, but I think Rosemary's Baby is a better movie. Mm. Um, Psycho is incredible and then like The Exorcist is great Um, shout out Max von Sydow Um, but it's really good I I just think it's I think that Midsommar built on it so well yeah that I kind of want to knock it down a little bit but I do think that the final the final like curse that Sergeant Howie shouts from the Wicker Man at all of them is like one of the most iconic scenes I've ever seen in a movie And it, that production design to build that Wicker Man and burn it is like, 
amazing and, and i think that will live forever sunset. yeah there's that image of um of uh lord of, yeah or, or lord summer isle with his hair up and his yeah. hands in the sky and you see the and you see him trapped in the background in the wicker man i posted it and i and i said uh first i did the may flower the may queen where she's like in the flower suit yeah. and i said this is going to be my outfit for the episode tonight and then i posted the lord of the summer Isle, and i was like this is what nick's hairdo and outfit is going to be but in the background i put our intern <laughs> pointing and <laughs> pointing at him as our intern in the wicker man we don't have an intern we're not that big not yet uh not yet so i gave it a six out of seven nick did as well let's add it up Okay, my oh. uh, my midsummer is twenty nine. Okay, great. And Out my of thirty five, Wicker damn. Man is twenty five. Twenty five. Wow, I actually kind of expected to be lower than you. On the Wicker Man, I gave that a 26 out of 35. Uh, okay. I think it's a really good movie. Uh, Midsommar, 30 out of 35. Honestly, I'd give it... I was kind of surprised because I thought I would actually be around like uh, 32 or something, but I had to bring it down on certain things. Yeah. All right. Let's go into our accolade section really quick. Uh, any accolades for these movies? you have a MVP? My MVP is... Hmm. Pagan Gods. <laughs> yeah. Dude, pagan gods win in both of these, dude. That's true. Kind of. Pagan religious. Lord Summer Isle really crushes this one, though. Yeah, he's pretty sick. He really devises a great plan to get an old virgin on that island. Yeah. That, speaking of which, least valuable players, I got I got plenty. Mediocre boyfriends. Yeah. Virgins. Bad. Devout Christians or people named Christian. Overzealous grad students. Overzealous grad students. Any planned trips to uh, Swedish sea countryside? Seaplanes. Yeah, seaplanes lose here. out. But yeah, if you were if you were planning on going to Sweden, you probably wouldn't now. Okay, yep. the countryside. And if you're planning to go to Scotland, you don't probably go still to the would. Islands. Yeah, you wouldn't go to the islands, especially not in a seaplane. Yeah, not in a seaplane. Those things don't work very well. Mm-mm. I hate snakes. <laughs> Indiana Jones is in the seaplane. Uh, <laughs> do you have like a favorite scene or a least favorite scene? Oh, the wicker man falling down in front of the sunset. Yeah. So I good. mean, my favorite, I, my favorite scene is, uh, the way that they do the may, the may pole scene in, uh, midsummer is like incredible. Mm. Um, yeah. And the yeah. worst scene is definitely the naked song. Yeah. Lust thing. They should have played lust by Kendrick Lamar over it. Uh, Someone's do you have any that. recommendations? Yeah, I've got a couple recommendations. What's you should it? absolutely watch the remake of The Wicker Man. <laughs> you need to watch the real Wicker I Man don't endorse first. It. You should 100% watch it because it is a massive train wreck and it's so funny. Or at the very least, just Google funniest scenes in Nicolas Cage's The Wicker Man and you'll just watch that clip. We're going to watch it when this is over and just laugh our fucking asses off. This is so funny. I don't want to do that. Don't uh, God, dude, I will. Do you have any serious recommendations? Yes, I do. Um, I another one, gonna... uh, The Nest on oh, Netflix. Yeah. I have not watched it yet, but I really want to. You should all watch it with me. We can watch it at the same time. That kind of reminds me of in Zoolander when he's like, they're asking Hansel who he's inspired by. And he's like, Sting. You know, I haven't really listened to any of his music or know anything about him, but he seems like a really cool dude or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Uh, uh, but I just recently read about this movie, and it sounds really interesting. Yeah, it does and sound it's really cool. Derivative of the Wicker Man as nice. well. Um, I recommend. I think we've already recommended this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I recommend The Witch. Yes, The Witch, the Witch is, a good is movie. so good. Uh, it's good. Uh, the Lighthouse. I like. I, I like The Lighthouse like a lot more. Uh, should we so do the you Witch should watch that. The Lighthouse? They're by the same person, but they're very, very different movies. I have a good Lighthouse one actually for you. Uh, but you have to see it first before I tell you. Uh, don't watch the movie Apostle if you were thinking about watching it because it looked like Midsommar or Wicker Man. It's not. It sucks. It's super disturbing. I'm very mad I watched it. Same with Bone Tomahawk. Even though Bone Tomahawk is a great movie, I'm very mad I watched it. Uh, also, my recommendation is to read up on coronavirus right now uh, and be proactive instead of just purely panicking like the, the people of Summer Isle. Don't do that. Don't just read headlines, like read the full articles and just try to stay aware because maybe they will make you not freak out as much and freaking out isn't helping anyone. And we want to spread that. Unlike the disease or the virus, coronavirus that we don't want to spread. 
But be Nailed. smart. Wash your hands, y'all. Um, you got. Uh, oh, uh, follow us on social media. Hey, <laughs> if you're if you're listening to me right now and you have an Instagram and you're not following us, what are you doing? Just follow us. If we're getting annoying, like you know, mute us. But don't mute us because I do a bunch of funny stuff on there. We are Instagram.com slash Facing Off Pod. Just look up Facing Off. And then we're also on Twitter. Uh, so far, only podcasts are following us on Twitter. But uh, we're Twitter.com slash Facing Off Pod. Uh, just look up Facing Off. And if you want to send us an email that I can read on air, uh, it could be really fun. They could be hate mail. Facing Off Podcast at gmail.com. Next week's episode, we haven't figured out yet. But we'll let you know. Okay? Capiche? Uh, you got a send off, Nick? Um, are we just gonna ignore the bear? Yeah, he's the bear. <laughs> <laughs>